Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Professor Gavde, for giving me this opportunity. My name is Sonal Panse. I'm a former student of Professor Gavde's. I have a diploma in fine art with portrait specialization from Raheja. And I also have a bachelor's degree in history and a master's degree in English literature from Pune University. Currently, I run my own business, Mason & C. We do illustration, design and writing work. You can find us at masonnc.com that is M-A-Y-S-U-N-I-N-C dot com. So, the topic today is art and literature. As you are probably aware, there is a strong correlation between the two, with art inspiring literature and literature inspiring art. And there is also a long tradition of combining the two. So we have art that was inspired by literary works, we have literary works that were inspired by art and we have literary works that come combined with art. Now going into the specifics of these could take a long time and my focus today is on why I think art and literature matter and how they relate to life. Now did art come first or did literature? Well, before people had a written language, they had art. The earliest examples are the ancient cave paintings from around the world. But these paintings have a certain sophistication that points to well-developed social groups. So even if they did not have a written language, or at least one that hasn't survived, they probably had a tradition of oral storytelling. So, oral literature. This and the art they did encompass their everyday lives, their experiences, their beliefs, their dreams and a lot else, collectively becoming a record of their cultural history. In time, over generations, this came to be written down. Now, each of us starts out with a cultural identity because of all the traditions of the past and then of course we make our own contributions. But if we are to make any contribution of lasting significance, we need to be aware of what went before us. Otherwise we would just spend valuable time reinventing the wheel, you know. And this is where art and literature can assist us. They equip us with the knowledge that can help take us forward. Now by literature I don't merely mean all the highly intellectual works. I am not sure actually that I care too much for that term intellectual. I find it rather pretentious. I also feel that if you go up that path caring too much for those kind of levels you are often in danger of insulating yourself from reality and from objective reasoning. Besides, it is not only the critically acclaimed works that can teach you something. You can learn a lot from all the others as well, even the total duds. Reading bad books, for example, can teach you how not to write something or can shine a light on the writer's incorrect and illogical thinking. So, by Literature, I mean reading in general. This can be fiction or non-fiction and not just books. It can be the news, online articles and blogs on a variety of subjects. Music, science, history, travel and a lot else. Don't restrict yourself to just art. The more widely you read, the better for you. Reading allows you to know about more things and to experience more things than you normally would in your particular environment. As an individual, your scope is generally limited. You wouldn't know half the things that you know if it weren't for the experiences of other people. And a lot of the time, the only way to learn about this is to read about them. Similarly, looking at good art, which of course is a subjective term and may depend on your personal aesthetics, but anyway, looking at good art can broaden your scope. 
it is a way of looking at the world through the artist's eyes and also a way of making you realize if you haven't realized it already that the same thing can be seen differently by different people and that there isn't always any one set way of going about doing something. Your way certainly isn't the only way. This can help you to see different points of views and also develop empathy and a broader perspective. And this in turn is likely to open up your options, allowing you to make of your life what you want it to be. You become a more balanced person as a result and this is essential to thrive both as a human being and as an artist. Now the more original your personality and your mind, the more original your art and your writing. Because art and writing are not just about technique, you know. They are also about having a unique vision and about having something meaningful to express. So if you keep trying to conform to uh, established touchstones or if you have a herd mentality, you will not be producing anything other than rehashed content. And another aspect of this is that unless you read, think, look clearly, question, there are more chances of your being misled in things that matter. There are many instances in your life when people, oftentimes authority figures, will not want you to think too much. Because your thinking can get in the way of their agenda. So what is one of the first things they will do? They will ban art and literature. They don't want you to see different viewpoints. They will only want you to see their viewpoint. And so anything that doesn't agree with their viewpoint can get banned. They will encourage you to feel offended by some writing or some artwork. Indeed, in many instances it has become so customary to be offended that you don't even question why you are offended. You may not even have seen the artwork or read the book that you are so offended by. Or if you have, you may not really question why it really matters in the large scheme of things to be so offended that these works need to be banned. No, you are just offended. Now this is a dangerous way of being. If you blindly accept what you are told without questioning it, without trying to see how things can be perceived differently, without coming to an understanding of your own, without developing a certain level of tolerance for views that you may not agree with, well then you effectively barricade yourself from any kind of progress. This is harmful to you as an individual and in the long run it may prove harmful to society as a whole. Because you do see, don't you, that the only reason we have come so far is because there were people who questioned things, who challenged and changed the accepted thinking of their day. So the whole point here is that you should read a lot. You should understand what you are reading, not just accept something because someone important or someone famous said it. You should see a lot of art, a lot of great art, and you should be inspired by it. Now by inspiration, I don't mean copying it, because you will only be doing yourself a disservice if you do that. No, take it as a step to explore and discover your own truths. And to do this, you need to do a lot of art every day. It may not always come out good, but the more you do, the more practice you will get to do better and to be better the next time. It is a continual process and there is no end to this learning. There will always be something new on the horizon, something that you should look into, something that could prove of immense benefit to you. And having this, this constantly changing and expanding universe to explore and discover is what makes life so 
immeasurably interesting. So, thank you for listening to me. Now, if you would like to get in touch, please email me at sonal at Thank you again. Bye.